All right, hello everyone. Hi, can you hear me? And can you see me? Thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you on this live stream today. So this is the 2nd of April 2022 and this is on Saturday. So today I will review my trades in the March and I will share the performance in March. Overall, the March was very a good month because I get some uh, nice profits. So uh, I will show you one by one on my trades and how I took trades, how I trail the profits along the way, and also how I exited its profits. So I hope you enjoy the life and uh, learn something new from today's live stream. Oh, looks like there's no camera. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, there you go. All right. Can you see me now? Finally. Okay. Let me see if I can see myself on this live. Um, I see myself on the screen, but uh, can you see me? Looks like not, right? This is this is so strange. I see myself. Oh, there you go. Okay. Now it's it's working great. Okay. Oh, all right, I will just do as it is. So uh, let me switch and get into topic right away. So uh, before starting, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, uh, this content is basically based on all my experience knowledge for educational purposes only. So uh, when you trade, when you decide to take trades, please do with your own risk management. And also, since this is live, if you can please follow the rules and gui guidelines on the live that will be great okay okay so let's start let me see who's here first and oh by the way please uh, be careful on these scammers out there using my name and creating some fake accounts so please be careful okay so yeah thanks for joining everybody Arnold and Dirk Mahardika Vipin and Oscar Jorg Richard and uh, Hide Suresh Eugene, Suleiman, and uh, Babak, James, Levinas, John On, and thank you for joining everybody. Movie Hero, Ismail, and Chong, and uh, let's see, Kush is also here. Thank you for joining. Augustine, thank you for joining as well. And Ivan Tyrol, thank you for joining. All right, so, so uh, the for performance in March, it has been very good. Uh, to come to conclusion, it was very good. So here is the spreadsheet of my trades in the month of March. Let me just place it here so that you can see the full text on this uh, in the spreadsheet. So uh, this spreadsheet is uh, you know only available for the GTS members, but uh, this is my performance. So every single trade. I track by myself on the spreadsheet. I put the name of the pair and date and time of a trade, execution, sell or buy, price level at the entry, and I put the uh, lot sizing and also pips to the stop loss. And every time I enter the market, I get I put all these information. And when I exit, simply I put the exit uh, price levels so that I get the result and I get how much profit I make how many pips I make or lose. So overall, afterwards, um, I took a total of uh, eight trades. So every time, as you may know already, every time I take uh, two positions per trade, so that's why you see Euro AUD twice, and Euro CAD twice, and Euro AUD twice. So basically, I take two positions at one trade. So technically, I had uh, 16 positions with 8 trades overall in the month of March. So, um, yeah, so the best trade I had in the month of March was um, these ones. A pound AUD that I took the trade on the 3rd of March. I was able to extend it to one of the positions was 462 pips and the other one was 445 pips and that was my best trade on the month of March. I think this is the best for 
entire year, I think. Uh, looking back the year of 2021, I never had this much of a big profit in pips, in numbers. So this was the biggest win so far. And the second biggest on the month of March was EURAUD. So EURAUD, again, I took two trades, two positions. In one, I exited with a 33 pips. And in the other one, I exited with a 329 pips. So this was also another big win. So the rest, also I got this uh, USDJPY. I took the trade on the 26th of March at uh, 620 UTC and I exited with a 66 pips on one of the positions. The other one, I exited with a 18 pips. So this one was also a good trade. But the biggest winners were Pound AUD and Euro AUD that I took the trade on the 3rd of March. But the rest are almost break even, small profits and small losses. So eventually, uh, my overall profit factor, which is, uh, which is actually um, here, profit factor is calculated by taking the average profit divided by average loss. Gross profit divided by gross loss is the profit factor, and that was 12.20. So that means my average risk and real ratio overall in the month of March was 1 to 12.2, which was also amazing because we had so many trends on the JPY pairs. JPY has been very weak on the March and uh, AUD and uh, Euro also, USD were very strong on the month of March. And that's why I got this uh, amazing uh, result. So max profit, 462.9 pips and max loss was minus 18 pips. So that's why my R multiple was also 14.75. R multiple is risk and reward ratio in terms of pips. And profit factor is risk reward ratio in terms of money. So these two, two numbers I also watch. So overall, my return percent was 62%, which was very, very good. 62% is, I think, it has been very good for uh, my entire career almost. That was very good. So um, if I can just break it down to um, some other uh, information. Let me turn, uh, switch to Discord now. Okay, so, all right, so here is a Discord, and uh, this is the performance in February. I also posted the video in February, so uh, in case you haven't watched that, I also talked about the performance in February. But in February, um, I got the PF7, and my return was 16.3%. But uh, in the month of March, it was obviously great. It was very great. So, uh, yeah, even backtesting, I never had that much of uh, big profits. So I think this is the biggest win so far in my career. So I took the trade Euro AUD on the 1st of March. The first trade I took the Euro AUD, uh, it was ended with... Uh, yeah, uh, exit with a break even so because the market just backwards. I was trading the profits. This was my entry. And after my entry, the market went bearish and I see the reverse end wave. Confirmation for this continuous downtrend. So I moved the stop losses to break evens. And after that, the market reversed backwards very sharply. So I exited with a break even. So that was my first trade on the Euro USD, and then uh, I took another one on EuroCAD. Next day on the th on the third of uh, March, on the sorry second of March, I took a Euro CAD. I took the sell. I placed the sell here when I saw this uh, breakout or a uh, counter trend line breakout. I placed a sell. And kept holding, my stop loss was on this yellow line. This was my stop loss. And this was my entry. And after my entry, the market went range. And then it broke the support, support level. 
So the market went towards my direction afterwards. And then um, as, as I see the market, the market retrace backwards very sharply. Yeah, so this is this was when I when I screened the chart by mobile. Here is the zoom up this uh, my mobile screenshot. As I monitor by mobile, so this was the this was my entry. Well, this was my stop loss. And I see this uh, huge bullish candle and it broke the the Kijun Sen and also it reached up to Kumo. So that's when I exited manually. I took uh, I exited these two two positions at the same time here. So that was a loss. So first one break even second trade USCAD was a loss. I lost it. Uh yeah. I lost so, so long. Hero C A D. It was uh it was this my second trade. It was 9.6 pips on each. I exited manually. And then um, the third trade I took was uh, Euro AUD. Euro AUD, my entry was at 1.52054 with a stop loss of 30 pips. And uh, so this was, this is screenshot away when I entered the market. The market is already going downwards towards my direction. Actually, this was my stop loss. And uh, as the market continued to be downtrending, afterwards, I set the break even. I moved the stop loss slightly below the position so that even if the market retraces backwards, I don't lose. So I can be healthy in my mindset. So this is a way to become a non-losing trader. Every time you see the market moves towards the direction, then uh, you better move the stop loss to break even slightly below the position when you sell slightly above the position when you buy so that uh this game will become either break even or win game and if you keep keep playing the break even or win game then uh you will see some huge profits along the way so that's why i moved the break even timing on this screenshot and then um after a while the market extended towards my direction 26 so I was uh, I continued to trial. I think the running profit was over 30 pips. So I decided to move one of the break evens to the previous high in five. There was a nice consolidating market and the market broke bearish. This is in the five minute chart. So I moved it, moved the stop loss to trial, start to trial the profit. I fixed. 26 of profit, 26 pips of profit, and keep following the downtrend. So, but the other one still at the break even because uh, the market may reverse backwards, and uh, so I just kept at the break even. And then uh, I took new trade that was Euro CAD on the 3rd of March. Next day, I took another sell. And uh, so that was here. I took this uh, Fibonacci bounce, Penta trend line breakout, and uh, band walking, and also engulfing break. I saw multiple reverse, uh, multiple downtrend confirmation in the five minute chart. So I took the sell. My stop loss was above the previous high, and I took the stop loss of uh, 30 pips on this trade. This is my third trade. And then EuroCAD, uh, it was the market actually went bearish. So it, this is still, you know, not really much of running profit. This is, hold on, did I mention? Yeah, reverse end wave, right? Uh, the market is reversing, going reverse end wave. I'm talking about this reverse end wave. And then, um, but this running profit, is a bit too shallow it was i think only 10 10 pips or so this is a bit too shallow so if i move the break even then the market may reverse backwards and hit the break even and continue to go towards major direction 
So in this case, I decided to put the stop losses uh, above the second previous high in the 5 minute chart. Uh, not the break evens, but second previous high in the 5 minute chart and kept holding the trade so that uh, I can minimize the risk per trade in this case. And then uh, continuously Euro AUD, afterwards the market continued to be downtrending. So I moved the stop losses to break even. Yeah. And then Euro CAD. Euro CAD also, uh, the market went down towards my direction, more than 30 pips, reverse in the wave. So I moved the stop loss to break even. Slightly below the positions is break even. Because I was running 30 pips of profit as I took the screenshot here. And then, uh, continuously Euro AUD. Uh, Euro AUD, the market kept going down. So, I kept trading the profit. This is now, at this point, the market is running over 100 pips of profit. Again, this was my sell position. And so, and originally, I my stop loss was here, my stop was here, so I moved the stop to lower to trial the profit along the way. So I fixed 52 pips of profit so that even if the market retraced backwards, I fixed 52 pips profit and continuously trial the profits as the market potentially keeps going down this way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and Euro, uh, pound AUD, I kept holding the pound AUD also since uh, 3rd of March also, and I ran huge profit. Uh, this one I fixed, uh, I had this uh, over 250 pips on these two trades, so I kept following the downtrend also. And then continuously Euro AUD, the market keeps dropping down this way, and uh, it's running 192 pips of profit. So I fixed 124 pips, 125 pips of profit by lowering that stop to here and then continuously follow the downtrend. Yeah. Well, I see many comments, but uh, let me just uh, go over uh, my trading, uh, trading uh, decisions first. And then let me come back to your comments. All right, so you pound AUD. Pound AUD also broke the support in the five minute chart and continuously going down. I was running over 300 pips, 328, 329 pips on these two positions. So I decided to lower the stop loss to fix 211 pips and then continue to follow the downtrend. So this is how I continue to trail in two different positions like this. I lower the stop loss. And as the market keeps going down, I lower the stop losses and continue to trail along the way. And if the market reverses backwards, I will simply exit here. And this will be the fish tail or head part. So, but in this case, uh, because higher time frames are still downtrending, uh, I kept holding the sell because the probability for the market to keep, don't keep going down is relatively higher in this case. Yeah. And then coming back to Euro AUD, the market is keep moving down. It also broke the support. So uh, I fixed 200 pips in this screenshot and kept trading the profit along the way. And Euro AUD also, Euro AUD, I still had two, two positions. So one, I moved the stop to here. The other one, I moved the stop to the most recent high in M5. And that was 308 pips fixed profit. But since higher time frames still pointing down, there is no reason to exit. I just keep following the market direction. So, yeah. That was my management. So I moved one of the stop losses 
300 pips and the other one moved 268 pips and still trading the profits along the way so this was the 4th of march so i kept holding two days and run this much of profit that was a very time efficient so euro aud i had only one position so uh the market is but but market is still going down so i fixed 329 pips of profit fixed so if the market reverse backwards without monitoring myself then i will just fix this much of profit but since the market is still downtrending no reason to fix manually i have to basically keep trading keep trading the profits along the way and and AUD was also still going down, so I fixed one of the positions 455 pips and the other one at 401 pips. So this was 401 pips, this was 455 pips. I fixed and kept following downtrend along the way. This was uh, also the 4th of March I took the screenshot and then next day on the 5th of March uh, yeah I yeah basically I think that was uh, yeah I think that was all the weekend and uh, I basically kept holding these two trays so this is these were my fixed profits since the market you know, retrace backwards after fixing 455 pips simply one of the positions i exit as the market reverse backwards to stop loss and the other one i exit manually because i see reverse confirmation and the lower time frames so one of the trades i exited at 455 by let the market hit the stop loss the other one i fixed manually with a 462 pips in profit and so afterwards i kept i left the chart because uh, i saw many other trending pairs after the third or the fifth of march but uh, i intentionally left the chart because i might be overconfident and uh, i had enough profit already so uh, i decided to leave chart and do my own things like uh, i had to uh, you know, spend time on my projects and also revising some books and also, uh, you know, uh, writing the Kyushu Ashi book. So I decided to take time for that and decided to leave chart less active in the market. So um, if I monitor the chart, uh, well, if I if I was more active in trading, then in between 3rd of March and 23rd of March, I will be trading more but uh, I decided not to uh, I decided to leave chart for two weeks or so so that's why you see no trades new and new um, no new entries between 3rd and 23rd of March like this so on the 27th of March I took the trade Euro CAD which was here mentioned and on this uh, screenshot it was over here Euro CAD entry 1.37891 level with a stop loss 29 pips. So I always keep the stop losses very small. Um, usually my stop losses are in between 15 to 35 pips in range because I take the five minute chart for the entries. So I got these uh, four confirmations. In this case, stochastic dead cross and band walking and Fibonacci bounce and counter trend line breakout there was also like a doji reverse also so i've got five or more multiple confirmations so i was pretty confident that the market continuously go down trending uh, higher time frames in a flower chart this is a flower chart it was down kumo down kijun sen down full span below candles and one hour chart also shows that the kumo down kijun sen down tenkan sen down and Chikou span below candles. So probability wise, in the five minute chart also, the market tends to go 
down this way continuously. There might be some retracement, but uh, the retracement should be shallow and the market continuously be downtrending. So that's why I decided to take the sell in this timing. And uh, yeah, so this was my entry on MT5. I took the sell over here and uh, my stop loss was 29 pips above the position. This is in the 5 minute chart. So uh, I took, took the stop loss above the previous high in the 5 minute chart with these confirmations. And then what happens was that the market reversed. Unfortunately, the market reversed backwards. I saw these multiple reverse confirmations, like a scarcity gold cross and uh, uh, also band walking uh, in against a uh, major direction or 20 SMA breakout against major direction and also um, doji break against major direction. So I got these multiple confirmations, reverse confirmations, and that's why I exited manually here. So this was my stop loss, this was my sell entry, and usually I exit before the price hit the stop loss, so that my drawdowns kept minimum, as small as possible. So I lost uh, 18 pips on these two positions. And then new trade. On the 24th of March, I took the trade on the USDJPY at 121.414 with a stop loss of 22 pips. So, 12 hour chart was up, 1 hour was bullish, and in 5, I got these multiple confirmations. So, I saw the probability of the market going up will be higher in the 5, so I took the buy. This was my entry in the this uh, MT5. So this was my buying edge. I, I got this uh, you know, breakout of this previous uh, doji and uh, you know this is potential continuously end wave. So when I see this uh, bullish candlestick, when I saw this bullish candlestick towards major direction, I took the buy. My stop loss was uh, below the previous low in 5 and it was 22 pips of stop loss. This was my stop losses. This was my buy entry position. And this was my trade. This was how I took the trade entry for buy. And then uh, after some while, the market took off towards my direction and ran over 30 pips towards my direction. So I moved these stop losses to slightly above the positions so that even if the market retraces backwards, I don't lose in this case. So this becomes already a break-even win game. So I just leave chart for a couple hours after I set the break-even and uh, just enjoy the day. So that was when I moved the stop loss to break-even. And then, uh, let's see, afterwards what happens was that the market reversed backwards. It reversed backwards, so simply I exit one of the trades here. When I saw this retracement, I think it was here, we double check. Um, yeah, exited one of the positions at 121.594, 121 17 pips of profit. So. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. So I saw this uh, breakout of the support. So I manually exited here. So, but the other, tr the, the second stop loss, I still keep it here at the break even because higher time frame is still, is still bullish. Higher time frame was still bullish. So I don't exit on the second one. If the market reverse backwards and hit the break even, then I will just take it. So, but I just fixed 17 pips on one of the positions. And then, uh, yeah, USDJPY continuously moved up towards my direction. Let me enlarge. So it went up towards my direction continuously. So this was, hold on. 
this was my entry this is in uh m5 so sorry my entry was all the way down here this was my entry after a while after i opened mobile for a couple of hours later then i found that the market went all the way up like this so i moved the stop loss i think stop loss was at the break even but i moved it to here which was uh, below 61.8 percent i moved the stop loss to here and keep holding the buy because in higher time frame too bullish so there is no reason to fix the profit and then what happened was that the um, i think the market went backwards yeah, yeah, that's the market went backwards and hit my stop loss so that's how i fixed 66 pips on the USJPY, as i mentioned here the one of the positions was exited on the 18 pips and the other one was 66 pips was in my exit so the last trade i took was uh it was on this one Hold on. it was on the uh pound cad i took that trade and uh that was in a loss 11 pips of loss on each positions and that's it for the month of march so, so once again overall i took only eight trades two positions at the time and eight trades i took and my result was 62 percent of return which was very time efficient uh, with my strategy that was my overall result so uh yeah so overall month of march was very good especially i was able to make you know big profits on the first and second week of that march so um it actually really uh you know uh i was able to you know take it easy for the rest of the month so yeah like like in this example when i found when i had the you know big pips over 10 pips of profit on the first week of the month or second week of the month then uh sometimes i leave chart intentionally i leave chart because i might be overconfident and i might be more greedy uh when i you know see the other markets so uh i try to stay away and come back towards the end of the month but uh, if i can't make profits over 10 pips on the first week second week then i will just monitor the chart continuously and uh, on the third week fourth week and hopefully to achieve over 10 pips at uh, sorry 10 percent of the profit for the month so that was my overall performance in march so uh, I took uh, I took this uh, survey on my YouTube channel. If you saw that, Hold on, let me see. Yeah, it wasn't here. In community, I posted one of the poll, like uh, how was your trade result in the March? And I see 39% profitable, and break even 26%, and loss 34%. So I can see more than 50% of my viewers are profitable. So this is very nice. This is a you know, very nice result. If you can follow the trend directions along the way with my Ichimoku strategy, then uh, you should be profitable in the March. If I just open the comments, I see a uh, doctor says profitable, but I don't count it as consistent yet. I caught the USJPY breakout because of your P wave analysis, I had a 10 pips stop loss and doubled my count. I'm happy with that result, but the important part is now being consistent with very small drawdown. Yes. So the result was positive, you it was win, but as you mentioned, uh you have to be consistent. Uh the question is whether you can keep trading in this manner and keep making profits every month. So uh however you trade. Uh, the result should be tested over time and uh, you should never be overconfident. Yeah, always be humble and always reset your mind on the next trade, on the next month 
and uh, then you should be fine. Well, Justin says, very active month in many markets due to the geopolitical events achieved a little over 14% profit due to weak Euro JPY and strong AUD this month compared to last month 5% profit. So it looks like Justin has been making profits for the last two months at least from this, but uh, March he's got 14% profit. That was a nice achievement. And uh, Krypton says uh, people actually lose, okay? So you have to, yeah, but I keep pushing. Yes, please uh, keep pushing, keep backtesting, practicing. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can capture the next big wave. Okay, uh, Epsilon says a break even because I'm investing, not trading. Okay, so you're holding in the long term. Muchino Frank says achieved 25% return, although no trend last week of March. Yeah, last week of the March, uh, there was no trend. So better to stay away in that case. Yeah, and so that was the comment from, from some of the, you know, supporters here but uh yeah month of march was unusual based on my career for the last uh, nine years uh, month of march in forex pairs were unusual unusually trending and very aggressive and yes i am sure it was due to uh geopolitical events and uh, some other events like uh you know rate decisions on us us and japan and some other factors but uh, yeah, as a trend follower, whenever you see trends, then you simply follow. When it stops, you exit. That's, that's it. The mindset should be very simple like that. Uh, I think it's us that makes things difficult and complex. But in Ichimoku Kinko itself, it only has five lines. A market, when you think about it, it's either up or down or range. That's it. So, yeah, you better look at the market in a very more simple way, but in a powerful way with consistency. Then uh, you should be, you know, running profits from, uh, you know, in the future, uh, future trades. Uh, before, I was switching my strategies many times and uh, I wasn't be profitable. But uh, once you fixed one strategy and try to master that strategy, then uh, you should be profitable in the long run. So, yes, the month of March was amazing. And that was, you know, that we had so many big trends in the market. But uh, it doesn't mean that in April, it will be the same. In April, all the markets may be quiet. In that case, you simply stay away. Yeah. Usually, after we see these huge trends in the market, then uh, for the next couple of weeks, usually, it tends to be quiet. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in that sense, uh, last week, I mean, the last week of the March was very quiet, retracing on the US, uh, on the JPY pairs, and some pairs are trending, but without breaking support resistance, it was a bit quiet. And uh, I am actually uh, watching how the news for uh, next week will impact on these pairs, because we have many big news, big events in the first week of the month. So it may impact the market and uh, it may, you know, uh, make the market move uh, to the future. So, yeah. But uh, once again, if you don't see any trends, then you should stay away. It's my rule. Yeah, so that was my overall. What was it? Oh, I saw some, uh, I think it was a lightning. Not sure. I'm sorry. I got the big sound downstairs. Some events going on, I'm sorry. Yeah, so anyways, uh, that was my comment uh, on my performance in March. So let me come back to your comments right now. Uh, and once again, thank you for joining everybody on this uh, live stream today. So, yeah, John Harris says, would you recommend to stick to one pair for testing? Yes, I recommend. Yes, you only stick to one pair and take 100 trades 
in C performance and then move on to the next pair. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining, everybody. Great to see you. Arnold says, uh, that amazing result, PF and profit. Congratulations. I've have I'm have an excellent master. Okay, you're welcome. Welcome. Okay, um, John Harris says, once you are quickly in profit, do you move the stop loss right above the positions to co cover the break even in the spread? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. But uh, in M5, the market should go towards your direction. Otherwise, you can't move the stop loss to break even. So let's say, for example, if you see, let's say you enter here. And just because the market goes up, you don't move the stop loss to break even. Uh, one of the timings would be when the market goes up on the N wave bullish, then you can move the stop to break even. So like this, uh, when you see the market goes towards the direction, then you can move the stop to break even. Otherwise, um, you. Otherwise, let's say if you move the break even at this timing. Then since this is not the end wave yet, the market may retrace backwards, hit the break even, and goes up this way. But overall, it was end wave. So, um, you know, the market is simply going towards the major direction. But uh, you need to see this end wave bullish towards the direction and set the break even. Yeah. So, you know, these confirmations you can run by price actions and also uh, confirmations on the trend line bounds or uh, you know candlestick patterns all, will also tell you exactly where to put the stop loss to break even. So yeah, everything should be based on the confirmations. We never trade with a gut feeling or uh, you know our uh, how to say like uh, our willpower. We can't trade like that. We have to see charts and take trades logically. And rationally. Okay, yeah, thank you for joining. Great to see you here. Okay, XAUUSD, I don't trade because it's ranging, so I simply stick to the Forex. Eker Gao says, uh, Can you say about Japan trade time? Uh, even after Tokyo trade time close, people from Japan still able to trade on uh, overseas broker right? So I want to know. How is it really affect the Forex market? Um, I don't think it makes any difference in Forex market. You can simply trade whenever uh, whenever the market is trending. When it's whenever it's ranging, simply stay away. Whenever it's trending, you just trade and that's it. So even if the market is trending in Asian session, I still trade. And if the market is ranging in the London New York session, then I simply stay away. Movie Hero says, can you tell this can be a trendy market if in a daily and a flower chart time frame, Kijun Sen Senko span A, Chikou span above candlestick and the price also above the Kumo, but price is below Tenkan Sen in daily or four. That's okay. That's okay. As long as price above Kumo and Kijun Sen, that's fine. What does it mean when Chikou span retraces while the retest is on the trend? Uh, when Chikou span retraces while the uh, rest is on the trend, then you should be hold. You should hold. Stay away. Yeah, Chikou span should be above candles to buy. Yeah. What is the indicator below chart? Oh, the indicators that I've been using is the Ichimoku in Kohyo for higher time frames. In the lower time frames, I use the Bollinger Bands and Stochastics to look for entry confirmations. Ek Hargao says, uh, your trade amount is so big, mine is only USD5 per trade risk. Oh, it's okay, because uh, these numbers should be universal. 
you know, this this is basically my trading account, but uh, this number is not universal. The numbers you have you should focus on is are on on the right side, win rate, and also profit factor, and max drawdown per trade, and also earn multiple, and return percent. These are the universal numbers. No matter how many, uh, how much you have in your account, these numbers are universal. So you better focus on these universal numbers, no matter how much you have in your account. Okay, so let me check some other comments for the next five minutes or so. Okay, but thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you on this Sunday or sorry, Saturday, Saturday night. Rahil says, how can I join your signal group or any other discord group? So uh, the discord group that I shared just earlier, this is the GTS Discord group. So um, this is only for the GTS members. And uh, there is another Discord uh, for Ichimoku members. And you can actually see the links on the below description. So uh, you can refer to it. Yeah. Let's see. John Ong says, great motivation. Sure, sure. Uh, I think, uh, you know, once you master the strategy and once you master step-by-step -step strategy, not only entry exits, but also risk management and psychological management, then uh, these things are possible. Uh, looking back my own trading career, when I was losing, I didn't know what, what, what I was doing looking back. And, but I think it's like, learning how to ride a bicycle, riding how to ri ride a car. Like when you first try to ride a bicycle, you don't know what to do, so you may trip over and you might get injuries. But after you were able to, you know, ride a bicycle, then you never trip over and, uh, you know, you, you can just, you know, keep going, you know, however you want to go. And I think that's the same on anything, including trading. Once you master, once you get these ideas, then you can never lose. And that is for sure. But since there are so many information and so many, you know, theories out there, uh, sometimes it's confusing. Brett says, I'm still in the demo account. I wonder when I will be in live account. In live account, I recommend you to do so after you see a three months, 10% returns on the real market with demo account. Then you can consider to start the real account. Yeah, Mahardika, you're welcome. You're welcome here. All right, thanks for joining everybody. Great to see you once again. Saman says, Hi, sir. When you keep holding your positions, uh, did it hit any impact from news? Uh, no, it didn't. It didn't. I simply kept holding and holding. So it wasn't, they weren't hit by the news. Oh, Ace says, uh, Missed the parts of your second channel live earlier. Would that be uploaded? later yes that will be saved on the archive by now so you can watch later Ek Hargao says uh, how do I get the management sheet you show right now this is only for the GTS members a spreadsheet but that uh, you don't have to use a spreadsheet simply you take the profit factor the max drawdown per trade and win rate if you keep these numbers, if you only look at these three numbers, you should be fine. The reason why I hand out this uh, spreadsheet to the GTS members 
is because I want to see their trace and I want them to get used to track their records. So you can just you know, open the blank spreadsheet and put all these numbers. Um, so the information I put was uh, the name of the pair and date and time and sell or buy, price level and lot size and pips to stop loss when you enter the market. And when you exit, simply put this price level of the exit timing. And when you go to the broker and you can see the result, uh, you can see the, how much you lost. So you can just put the number here from the, from the platform broker and you have a similar uh, spreadsheet like this. And make sure that you also get the drawdown a trade. Yeah, my drawdowns per trade should always be less than 2% because uh, they never hit the stop loss. So yeah, that's how you can uh, look at your numbers. Before, I was only focusing on the win rate or I was only focusing on how much I gain, how much I lose. But uh, at some point, I figured that how much is not universal. So afterwards, I start not to look at how much or how much I lose or win. Even win rate, I don't really care because with my strategy, win rate can be only 20 to 30%, but still uh, I can make profits over monthly basis. So the most important number with my strategy is the profit factor. Whenever you backtest in the FT5, or any tools uh, out of 100 trays, you have to have at least profit factor 5 or above. If you have PF5 buff on the tester, then when you trail, trade on the real account, real market, then most likely your PF will be 3. Because you can't monitor every single hour. So your PF will drop a little bit uh, from the tester. So. That's how you can uh, train yourself. All right. Oh, Arnold, thank you for joining my Ichimoku community. So after you join, please come to my web page and then I hover over on services and Ichimoku community and how to join. When you click how to join, then uh, you launch to this sub page and you can find three steps to join my Ichimoku community discord and get all the perks. So make sure to follow these three steps and then you get all the perks. But once again Arnold, thank you for joining Ichimoku community. So I hope to you to continue your journey along the way. Movie Hero says, if you do the loop by screening charts for looking trendy market, why overconfident affect your trade? Uh, because uh, it's about psychology. You know, sometimes you might feel overconfident and you may enter without looking for or without waiting for the confirmations. So in that case, it's better to stay away. Yeah, for me, I, you know, uh, this is my risk management. In terms of mindset, uh, I prefer to stay away because I feel safer after the 3rd of March or I fix, a, I fix the profits on the 5th of March and afterwards I feel safer in my mind, peace in mind and that's why I don't trade afterwards. So this is, that's how I simply manage myself. Okay, Rajan says, uh, Rajan says, uh, okay, sir, you mean Bollinger Bands and Square 6 will, will be a good idea for a 5-minute trade, not Ichimoku. Yeah, in a 5-minute chart, I prefer these price actions and Bollinger Bands Square 6 uh, than Ichimoku because Ichimoku is a bit lagging to trade. Uh, so uh, I usually use Bollinger Bands Square 6 and lines, of course, lines, resistance support lines, 
the trend lines, Fibonacci lines I use also. Okay, so I guess I will be ending the live for now and uh, switch to the Ichimoku membership live. So uh, once again, thank you for joining everybody. I hope you learned something new from my trade review on the month of March. And of course, I'm not here to, you know, show off my, uh, my uh, performance, but my true intention is for you to learn based on how I took the trade, how I exited with a mindset. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you continue the journey with me on my YouTube and uh, be a non-losing trader first. So thank you for joining everybody once again and have a great weekend. So until I see you next time, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold. All right, bye for now, everyone. Matane. Thank you.